Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 20th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes and world weather. Looking at here, the last 48 hours of sun imagery. We still have those plasma filaments in the northern hemisphere spinning around. Plasma tornadoes and then ripping away in the last second there, you'll see. Also, we have six sunspot regions to talk about. No major solar flares coming our way. Solar X-ray flux has remained in C range. So C-class solar flares throughout the day, minor at best. Lots of activity on the backside of the sun. Visible there on the left-hand side, cresting imagery incoming. And looking at outgoing here, lots of plasma around the equatorial region. Erecting from the surface. And that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on, everybody, as our sun goes through its changes. Watching these plasma filaments, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. Look at this one just recently, ripping away. Last few images here. Multi-spectrum, most active regions there. Outgoing and incoming. Also notable there, earth-facing disk with the six sunspot regions. So keeping an eye on our sun here in solar cycle 25, as it is already above predicted values for sunspots in this solar cycle, which will be a maximum, is a maximum. Having another look here, we do have one coronal hole to talk about. Earth-facing position, southern hemisphere of our sun. This is the last 48 hours of activity coming from our sun today. If you're enjoying all of these videos, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and share with your friends and family. Looking at space weather conditions, we are under a G1 minor geomagnetic storm. Impacts are expected. Weak power grid fluctuations can occur. Solar X-ray flux remains in C range as it has been pulsing for the past 48 hours. C-class solar flares, solar proton flux, low geomagnetic activity, just ramping up now to a KP3. Having a look here at our real-time solar wind, about 390 kilometers per second right now after seeing a slight spike in this last few hours. Notice temperature there, the green graph. And here is a look at our magnetosphere with those solar winds as they are pounding us at just about 400 kilometers per second. This is a graph showing the solar winds, the darker reds being the faster solar wind speeds. Noticing all that backdraft action. Looking at the ISWA space prediction spiral, still only showing minor CME giving us a glancing blow 20, 20th into the 21st. No, no other CMEs have been thwarted our way. Having a look at the NOAA space production spiral as well. Looking for minor glancing blow from that CME projected the other day. Having a look at LASCO 3, showing the bright star of Jupiter on the right hand side. And as you can see, no major CMEs taking off from the sun. Just a few solar flare bursts. Closer look here, keeping an eye on the northern hemisphere. Lots of energy coming from the north and the south right now. Having a look at earthquakes here for the past 24 hours, as we're sitting at about 260 earthquakes, according to USGS. Having a look here first over North America, as we did have an earthquake off the coast of the Carolinas, a 4.3 was reported there today, and it has since gone. We did have a 4.3 reported yesterday, Port Alice, or sorry, Port McNeil, Canada, North Juan de Fuca Plate, and we've seen a lot of activity up into the Pacific Northwest. Largest through the region being the 3.7, 
Northern California. But as I said, keeping an eye on the Pacific Northwest, looking at USGS, all the earthquakes across the region, 106 earthquakes across the Pacific Northwest, minor earthquakes around Yellowstone and northward into Montana. and even right up into northern Washington, southward towards Mount St. Helens, Ashford, Washington, and as well, Lausanne. Having a look at the tremor report here, 100, 706 epicenters reported over the past 24 hours. A lot of them occurring Vancouver Island and into northern Washington, down into Oregon. So whenever we see these swarms occurring of minor activity, definitely keeping an eye on the Cascades over the next two days. Also overlooking Hawaii, we've seen an increase in activity there as well. About 50 earthquakes across the region and 25 of them being right around the Kilauea caldera. Even inside the caldera, a couple of minor earthquakes reported there. But yeah, 31 earthquakes in and around Kilauea caldera, keeping an eye on imagery. Carrying on here, 5.1 earthquake recorded. Russia, southern tip of Kamchatka off the coast, as well a couple earthquakes here. Japan region, submarine volcano region. 4.7 there, Indonesia, 151 kilometer depth, 4.5 there, not Prairieville, Alaska, Bengkulu, Indonesia, and then our deepest earthquake the past 24 hours, 4.2, 587 kilometer depth, the Fiji region, as well as 4.9 in Pengai, Tonga, another one just occurred, another 4.3. Central America saw started off the day with a 5.4 earthquake off the coast, into the Cocos Plate, followed by a 4.6 and a 4.7. 4.9 there, Guatemala, South America, La Tirana, Chile, 4.4, and as well, Oval, Chile, 4.3. Only earthquake to report over here towards Europe, 4.4, Turkey. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Quick glance at the last seven days for shakers across the planet. All of the elevated rings are the depth of the earthquakes, as we've seen some pretty deep activity. The Fiji region, and as well Indonesia this week, three large earthquakes, two of them being very deep, expecting another large shallow earthquake in between these and towards the Indian plate, possibly. But with all this increasing activity through Central America and up into North American plate, got to be ready for something here. Cascades, Juan de Fuca plate. Or these regions as mentioned. Now let's have a quick glance at weather. That's right, this is our sulfur dioxide map with windy.com. Just wanted to give you an update on all of the sulfur ash in it being thwarted into our atmosphere is now encompassed the whole northern hemisphere some of it now swinging back to russia other parts being thrown northward towards the north pole yet again but it looks like air quality will get pretty thick here through canada as high pressure ridge swallows that up overlooking the rest of the world most of the so2 was thwarted in the northern hemisphere and has now encompassed it. Having a look at weather here across North America, we have two low pressure systems to deal with this week. Colorado low and a low off the coast of BC. Watch for rain to continue all week for the coast of BC and as well extreme weather here developing through the Gulf states. But yeah, large low here penetrating the coastline, bringing in waves of moisture. Eastern Canada is going to be dealing with some snow, while southern Texas 
and the Gulf states will be dealing with a low-pressure system there. Coming in from the Pacific this week, long-range forecast, it's going to get hairy through the Florida state and as well the eastern states as that lower level system moves eastward. Low pressure system here through central Canada and the U.S. will still be bringing snow while in the long range forecast some more extreme weather for the eastern parts of the United States. Carrying on here overlooking Europe high pressure ridge will be prevalent in the long range forecast but right now we have many low pressure systems affecting you guys this week and some pretty cool temperatures as well these systems keep coming in through France from the Atlantic and then spreading through parts most of Eastern Europe but high pressure ridge building in for the long range forecast things may change by then Overlooking Africa, watch for heightened extreme weather this week. Some intense daily evaporation rains and storms will be booming right across Central Africa. Overlooking the rest of the Pacific Ocean and Australia, high pressure ridge locked in for most of Australia this week. No major tropical systems here forecast in the long range, but still looking at some pretty big systems heading through the North Pacific in the long range forecast here, all heading towards Alaska and Northern BC. Possible cyclone developing in the long range forecast for New Zealand, so stay tuned. Give you a quick glance here at the Southern Hemisphere for low pressure systems. Just looking at the sheer size of these beasts. I want to thank everybody for watching today and I hope you enjoyed The Daily Do. Keeping you and humanity aware and prepared to daily events worldwide. I'm going to leave you here looking at moisture maps overlooking the Atlantic. These systems keep getting trapped. They're so big. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily do. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.